you guys, it's your girl Fire here and welcome back to her story where I do my makeup and talk about Hawaii's reigning queens. This is the second episode and in today's episode we are talking about Queen Kapi'olani. A little bit about her life. I couldn't find a lot about it but a little bit about her life um, and more importantly her contributions to Hawaii. So if you are interested then stay to the end of the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to follow me at hawaii underscore mommy on instagram because i'm there if i'm not here on youtube and that's where this look is gonna be um you know what i mean showcased but nevertheless if you're interested in this then stay to the end of it and let's get started with her story the life and legacy of queen kapi'olani so before we get into her story we need to put some respect on her name we are gonna pronounce her name correctly <laughs> because if you don't it means something totally different than what the original meaning is okay so the queen kapiolani okay that is exactly how you say it in modern day we say kapiolani i mean i don't know if you hear the difference but there is a glottal stop originally when you pronounce her name because it is spelt with an okina between the i and the o or an apostrophe apostrophe her name means ark of heaven so if you say it as Kapiolani or Kapiolani goodness that's how the Torah say it it means ark to hell <laughs> just think of it as that it doesn't really mean that but you know just think of it when you keep saying it wrong then you're disrespecting her name and then her husband for the longest time I have been saying Kalakawa and his name is pronounced Kalakawa there is an accentuated A when you say it. Like, what? We gonna say it correctly in this segment though. Let's get into the her story. She was born Julia. Her last name is a challenge, okay? So don't, don't, don't. It's very long, okay? Napela Kapuo Kaka E. There's an apostrophe between the K, or the A and the E. So, Napela. She was born December 31st, 1834 on Hilo, Hawaii or in Hilo, Hawaii. Hilo is the biggest island or Kona Hilo Big Island is the biggest island of all the islands. There are six islands in the archipelago. Her father was a high chief and his name was Kuhio Kalanianole. I know how to say his name because you know what? I used to ride the bus. Kuhio Kalanianole was her father. And her mother's name was Kinoiki Kekaulike. Queen Kapiolani, her name, as I said earlier, means the Ark to Heaven, which only serves her right because this was a very nice woman. In the words of Queen Liliokalani, she describes Queen Kapiolani to be a woman of sweet disposition and a mildable temper so she wasn't the one to be mad she wasn't the one to be negative she was just all for her people and for everybody's um health and welfare as an adolescent between the ages of 16 through 18 julia had packed her bags and was arranged to be married to a man that is 30 years older than her <laughs> when i read that i was like ew but you know what i mean nobody like i said back then really married for looks or love you had to be somebody in order for you to marry me in the monarchy okay you got to be somebody of status okay to keep the status quo to keep the bloodline to keep that power so she married somebody that was 30 years older than her and his name was bennett namakeha okay i hope i said that right wasn't really much information that i could get or find um at least valuable information that i could find on their marriage um but i did read that they bore no children together no living children together and when they did try to have kids she did miscarry so that's that that's on that moving on not only was bennett a high chief but he was the uncle to queen emma now more on queen emma later we're gonna get on her later okay we're gonna talk about her later after um this segment fast forward to a little before 1860 the king bennett had became ill and in efforts to make him well again 
Queen Kapi'olani and King Bennett had hopped on the ship and took a tour to Kiribati. Kiribati is or was known as the Gilbert Islands in the Pacific. When I looked at the map, it was in the Micronesia. There's a Polynesian Triangle, there's Micronesia, Polynesia, Melanesia, okay? It was like by Micronesia and stuff. And weirdly, when I looked up Kiribati, there, um, it sounds Polynesian, but their language is a mix between like, as far as pronunciation and stuff, it sounds Tongan, but Marshallese at the same time. It's not weird, but it's so like unique to me. So I was like, what? Like they went to Kiribati? It was all in vain because he ended up passing away anyway, sadly, you know what I'm saying? So Miss Julia was left a widow at a very young age with no kids. So now a widow, Miss Julia was sad, I'm sure, but she wasn't sad for long because two years after the passing of King Bennett, she had remarried to Chief David Kalakawa, okay? So he wasn't a king at the time because he was in the running against Queen Emma. I was like, damn, they all just tied together. Of course, he ended up winning. So the marriage between the two remained childless, but um, she did adopt. I don't know, maybe she was scared because of her first miscarriage that she had with her other husband. Um, maybe she was scared to have more kids or maybe she couldn't um, have kids. But I read the reason why they were childless was because um, King David, his fish wasn't swimming, okay? It wasn't quite getting up there. <laughs> Um, respectfully, of course. Instead of bearing or keep trying for her own children, the enthusiastic queen had adopted her Hanai sister's kids, sons. Jonah and David, where they became or announced princes of Hawaii. As far as Queen Kapiolani's personal life, that is all I got. Um, from the sources that I was reading from, they all kind of said the same thing and nothing new or nothing more. So um, we're just going to move on into her contributions to Hawaii and its people. So at the time, there was this disease, disease called leprosy. Leprosy was killing a lot of the Hawaiian people. And guess who brought it there? white people. Olani did not like that. So she was like, I mean, I gotta help. I gotta get out there. I gotta, you know what I mean? I gotta get on it. Let's see what we can do to, you know, keep our people alive and healthy and, you know what I mean, to help. So she went to Kalao Papa Molokai. That's where a lot of the leprosy patients were. She was out there, you know what I mean? Tied her boots up, she was help passing out medicine, you know, at the table, taking down names. Like she was really out there, not just oddly standing by and wishing people well, you know what I mean? After returning from Kalao Papa Molokai, the queen was still, I wouldn't say ambitious, but she was still, um motivated to help her community so she raised the funds to build Kapiolani's home for girls and that was a place a sanctuary a refuge for the hawaiian children to go to um while their parents were suffering from leprosy or being treated for leprosy you know what i'm saying and i thought that was very smart of her because had she not done that and protect the Hawaiian children, like the Hawaiian bloodline would have been killed off a lot faster than the rate that it was going. Because mind you, all these ships are coming in, all these Europeans are coming in, these Americans, these Caucasians all coming in and procreating with the Hawaiian population. And now you don't have pure Hawaiians anymore. I commend her for that. So kudos to Queen Kapi'olani. Fast forward to 1821-ish, because it wasn't clear on the exact date on when she got there, but she had got invited to attend the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria. That was a very, should I say famous? Um, that was a very popular banquet for the kings and queens. And get this, 
it was all the way in London. So she had to hop on a boat and probably be voyaging for days before she even got there. The fact that we were included is pretty bomb to me. We're all the way in the Pacific, you know what I'm saying? And we got invited to a king and queen banquet all the way in London. Like we had, we had clout back then. <laughs> But she had attended that representing the Hawaiian kingdom. She represented well. Um, after that, she had toured the United States and she went to New York where she was inspired by a charity hospital to open up her own hospital on Oahu. So that's exactly what she did. She opened up her own hospital called Kapi'olani's maternal home. Now to this day, like it is a hospital where a lot of children are born and where a lot of mothers um, are able to find resources to, you know, feel comfortable. They have the best doctors. There's just all the way around a very, very good hospital. Not like Queens, AKA Queen Emma's hospital. More on that later, like I said. Shout out to Kapi'olani Medical Center because that's where I was born, like. <laughs> At 5.45, yours truly was born at Kapiolani Hospital. Fun fact, I bet you didn't know that. Fast forward, um, King David Kalakaua leaves for the US and he winds up getting sick and suffering from a stroke where later he dies um, in Santa Barbara, Cali trying to get help or whatever. I don't know why he didn't just go home, but he probably died on the way there or something. I don't know. But um, he dies. Now, Queen Kapi'olani again is left a widow and she does not remarry at this time. It took nine days for her to find out that her husband passed away. And from there, she was just like, you know, I'm pretty sure she was very sad and she was just like, I'm done i am done i'm being out of the limelight so she then retired and lived out the rest of her days in her home in waikiki sadly uh i couldn't get any more information than that um my guess is as good as yours but i did read that she did die june 24th in 1899 um residing in waikiki in her home where hyatt regency hyatt regency is that is where her house used to be so they're they're on you know what i mean royal ground if you ask me i don't even know why but anyways a big corporation is on royal ground what is new queen kapiolani's legacy does live because she does have a lot of streets a lot of hospitals um she has a college named after her, schools named after her, parks named after her, after her, after her. And um, she, the legacy of what she has done, the blueprint that she had put out um, is definitely flourishing to this day on Oahu. So um, all is not lost. Take away that this was a very benevolent, very friendly and very um, helpful queen to the hawaiian people and to the hawaii legacy okay so i hope you guys enjoyed this her story tune in next week to hear the her story of queen emma thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video